Hi everyone, um, I'm back with a new video. Um, first off, I want to say a big, big thank you to everyone who has watched my first video, has sent me messages, have said um, such great things to me that this challenge is a really great idea. It's been absolutely fantastic to get your feedback um, on what I'm doing. It's really made me feel really good about this challenge and, you know, fingers crossed it, I'll be able to complete it, um, do one book every single week for a year. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling really good about it. But obviously, as I said in my previous video, um, I've got like, you know, a month until this whole thing will start. So I was thinking about um, what I could talk about for the time being in, in various videos. And I thought, well, you know, it, what would be a good one uh, is to talk about various adaptations of different books. Now, I did do kind of a draft version of this, of the 10 um, adaptations that I thought were absolutely excellent. And it lasted over an hour. So I was like, oh, no, that's not a good thing. I don't want, <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, people aren't going to sit for an entire hour and listen to me talk about my favourite adaptations. So I thought I'd do instead one video for every um, adaptation I'm talking about. That way you can pick and choose which one you want to um, look at and, you know, listen to me talk about rather than have to sit and for the entire block as it were. So this one, I am going to be talking about a story which, you know, is extremely popular, very, very well known, and I absolutely adore this adaptation. Um, and that is the adaptation of Sebastian Falk's Bird Song. Um, I had to go out and buy this copy of Bird Song um, to date the book, um, should I say, not the DVD, because I have the DVD for ages, because to prepare for this video, I went through my book collection and found that my copy of Bird Song was missing. And uh, I have a feeling that I ended up in a charity bag because before I, I moved to this house, I sort of had a bit of a clear out of my. Um, books and, and such and uh, even though I absolutely hated doing it I had to be done um, and I have a feeling that Birdsong ended up in the charity bag and I didn't realise so um, I've I've gone out and bought another copy because it's absolutely amazing um, but yeah here is the actual adaptation that I'm talking about today uh, and this is BBC did the adaptation in 2012 of this absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning read. Um, Bird Song, in case you haven't come across it, is about a man called Stephen, here played by Eddie Redmayne, an absolutely fantastic actor. Um, he It starts off in 1910 when he turns up in France um, to start working at a factory um, of um, this gentleman who we goes to, to live with. And in the house, he meets this woman called Isabel and falls in love with her. But unfortunately, Isabel is the wife of his new boss. Um, and they have a, a really beautiful, passionate love affair. Um, and as the, the book goes on, just as in this drama, it flips back and forth between what happened to them before the war and what happens to him during the war. The book also covers a section from 1978 where we're following um, Stephen's granddaughter and her finding his journals and putting the pieces together because he writes some of his journals kind of in code um, and trying to figure out what happened to him. So, But in the drama, they don't do that. They they only cover the period of pre-war and, and during during the war with uh, between Stephen and, and Isabel. I have to say, I think it's absolutely astonishing. It's one of the best, I would say, depictions of First World War in drama in recent years, because not only does you know it depict the things that you used to seeing, you know, trenches and fighting and bullets and that everything. It, it, it's it's one of those situations where you feel it. You you can feel the cold, you can feel the blood splatter, you can you can imagine the bullets whizzing around you. It, it's absolutely astonishing and Eddie Redmayne really, you know, to, from me gets an applause for this role because he is able to convey so much just from his facial expressions because there are sequences in this where he, he's not saying a word, he just sits there and you can hear every thought um, 
you know, that he's thinking. You can, you can feel everything that he's feeling. There is some amazing sequences as well um, from this drama because it covers not just, you know, I don't I want to say typical roles that you see dramas um, do um, of, of soldiers during the war. Um, it also looks at those who dug under the trenches, the German trenches, to plant bombs to blow up the trenches. Um, and yeah, there, there's a, a, a character in Birdsong who, who's really in the thick of that to Stephen befriends throughout the course of, uh, of his time during the war. But mainly um, it, it, it's about Stephen and how this love affair completely changes his life. And okay, you have the thing with BBC, well, dramas in general, shall I say, not just BBC, uh, that you have more of a benefit in that you can have the drama be multiple parts. So, you know, six, seven, eight, whatever. It depends on, on the source material, of course. Um, so cutting things out is not so much of an issue because you had the room to work with the rest of the the the, the source material and everything um bird song is a two-part drama i think each part was about an hour and a half an hour and yeah an hour and 20 minutes or so um so it's able to to delve quite deep in this book and as you see it's not it, it's a good sized book but it's not it's not a huge thing so um there is a heck of a lot of stuff from from the from the book um in, in the novel is in pages of of stuff and it's so fantastic especially because of this source material how it writes um various scenes of war especially um of the men going over the top and everything there is an amazing sequence in 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 this um where and i think I believe the exact same thing happens in the book as well um it's been a while since i read the book so forgive me if if i have got this wrong for for those who have read the book more recently and go ah she's she's actually got that wrong um <laughs> but there there's a sequence where the um men have gone over the top into no man's land um Stephen's gotten through it and he goes to to meet his friend and out of I think it's 800 men who go over the top only 150 um made it through that hour or something um or however it doesn't actually tell you how long the time it's been you just know it's in this segment of them going over the top only 150 odd have survived and he he wants to find his, his friend after this is all over and they're kind of all in kind of a wooded area um and you see the men who have survived you know their their reactions to it um and some of them are, are just standing and sm um, smoking because they just they can't talk about it, they can't contemplate talking to anyone about it um you have people who are they are they are talking to each other because they feel they need to say something and be with their friends and have a laugh with their friends and then there's a there's a boy who's about 18, 19, and he is sat on the ground, covered in mud, rocking back and forth, clutching his gun as close to his body as he can. And he's saying the instructions over and over and over again that he was told to do because he, he's in so much shock. He can't, he can't understand what he's just been through. And, you know, and to see... Like the, the, there's a section where um, it's thought that Stephen has, has died and he gets thrown into a, a pit of dead soldiers he has to climb his way out of. And it's it's just these things that you see is so horrific. But it brings, you know, you know, the the recognition that, you know, this this is what these men saw. The, these, these poor boys who, you know, the majority of them went, off and never came back what they saw what they went through and no wonder you know soldiers of both um first and second world war found it very difficult to talk about their experiences when they got back and that's what happens with Stephen. he kind of um you, you know throughout the war he he becomes very hard and it's because of situations that happened with Isabella and everything, he kind of um, shuts himself off 
to make it because I think he feels that if he's detached, it will be easier for him. But it's very interesting with um, Elizabeth, the granddaughter, reading her um, grandfather's journals and trying to figure out what happened to him. It, it's it's an absolutely amazing read, and this drama hats off to to the BBC for for making it. It was absolutely beautifully done, and there's a lot of sequences. Um, that you have, as I said, which is Eddie Redmayne, uh, you could just, you could just looking at, at his face, he's not having to say anything, but he's conveying everything to you. It's really harsh, it's cruel, it's emotional, it's fantastic. Um, there is, um, I've actually just looked on Wikipedia just to, um, I wanted to check something, um, and apparently there, there is a film work version of this in the works, so, um, I don't know, maybe if uh, the film is pretty good, then I'll be making a, another review or just a tag on one to this. Um, but yes, for a drama about the war done fantastically and showing, you know, true kind of horrors of things that, that people went through, uh, these men went through, I think Birdsong is absolutely fantastic. I recommended it to everyone. I think lots of people should should see it. Um, so, if you uh, manage to come buy a copy, watch it. It's absolutely fantastic. So, that's Birdsong. Uh, next, I'm going to be doing... Um, well, I won't say what I'm going to be doing. I'll, I'll leave it as a surprise for, for you all. Um, but yeah, that's what I've thought about Birdsong. And I, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave any comments that you have. If you've seen it as well, let me know what you thought of it. Um, and I will be back soon.